Greatest Mortals, Jared Petty here with IGN, joined by... Frank Knight, thanks for having me. Uh, no problem, thanks for being here, Frank. Lucasfilm Limited, Bandai Namco, what could it be? Frank, what do we got here? So this is the brand new Star Wars Battle Pods. Star Wars Battle Pod. What's a Star Wars Battle Pod, Frank? I assume it's a, you know like an Episode One pod racer with maybe like some machine guns or like laser nope, guns. Nope, no Episode One pods whatsoever, at least not what we've seen so far. As a matter of fact, no Episode One references at all, which I'm eternally thankful for. So, no, it's uh, not a pod racing game. So is it, is it an iPod game? No, it's not an iPod game. Or nor an iPad game? No. Nope, no iPhone. iPhone? Nope, nope, mobile no Mobile game of some type? Uh, no, this is not a mobile game. Uh, Frank, I'm going to give you one more guess. What could a Star Wars battle pod be? Uh, is it have a relation to the crazy Japanese Gundam pod games? It does have a relation to the crazy Japanese Gundam pod games. What are those? Folks, those are arcade games. That's right. We have a brand new Star Wars arcade game unveiled at New York Comic Con. Star Wars Battle Pod built around the POD technology. And Frank, what is POD? It's the panoramic optical display. That's right, right. panoramic optical display. That's the wraparound display you're going to see in the shots here in this new Star Wars space shooter, complete with Death Star trench runs. That's right, heading down here, we're going to blow up this uh, the, the Empire's super weapon, engage in dogfights. We're going to go to Battle of Hoth. If got it, can't have a good Star Wars game without it. Oh, yeah, I have to have Hoth. Hoth yeah. is the most important thing. It's in everything. Yeah, Hoth is in. If you're going to make a Star Wars video game, chances are there's going to be some iteration of Hoth in it. Of course, once again, here we see... Endor. We have the speeder bike chase. That's right. And, oh, oh my God, look at those stormtroopers. Yeah, oh, look at that. The stormtrooper. Uh, what's going on? Did the guy just jump on the front of our speeder bike? Yeah, he really wants his speeder bike back. Okay, look at this. Look at this dude. He's just like... He, he just bails off of his bike, and he and just like... lands on your speeder bike. I, I don't I don't know if I approve. I honestly don't think that... At some point, you just got to let somebody have the bike. Although I am impressed by this guy's acrobatics. I mean, look at that. It's like, I, have, I have friends who have that uh, scout armor, and man, that would be really hard to see. You got With the visor, very, yeah. very hard visual... So, uh, peripheral vision in that. Yeah, definitely. So I, I'm thinking this does not end well for guy jumping on speeder bike, no matter what. Even though he makes a perfect jump here, really, all you have to do is hit the brakes. Yeah, and you just go flying. Yeah, just go flying. I, I think this is a bad thing. It's going to end badly for him. But, oh, you know, that's his fault. And is there a punch button on the, the control panel? Um, nothing I nothing that we've seen. We've seen a view button. There's a yeah. change view button on the on the uh, display. Okay. But that's about it. All right, let's move on here. So this guy gets uh, gets thrown. Yeah, and let's uh, we'll look at those controls here more in a second. Guys jumping around. So we've seen – oh, there we are, the space battle over Endor. That's right, the Battle of Endor, MC-80 Star Cruisers. Uh, Imperial Star Destroyers, Death Star, etc., etc. Moving down here. Oh, now we're back to the uh, trench run again. We're now back to the first yeah. Death Star from the, back to from the, the first second one. Oh, there it is. Stay on target. Oh. Stay on target. Get some jet porkets. Up. Down the... Oh, uh, there we are. Thermal Exhaust Port. Han Solo Hu, And kaboom. And we're going to stop there for just a second and go back and look at a few things to this game. So a new Star Wars arcade game, as you pointed out, based on the pod, the POD system. Now, uh, Frank, you ever fooled with those Gundam cabinets before? I've had friends that gone to, uh, have gone to Japan and told me about how awesome they are. I, I always coveted the old Battletech yeah. network uh, arcade cabinets from like the late 80s. Uh, so it was always one of the things I really wanted to do. I wanted to go to Akiba and check out these Gundam cabinets. And it sounds like there might be a similar thing coming to the U.S. Yeah, I uh, I was lucky enough to live in Japan when these things were really at the, the apex of their popularity. And so I played with them a lot. And uh, they're wonderful. The, the wraparound tech is, is really exciting and kind of gets you into the game. The ones that I played on were all networked together. So you could play multiplayer scenarios uh, against your friends or cooperating with them across a variety of maps. You had two hand controls, two foot controls. You had a, a headphone jack so you could come in and jack in and be able to hear each other and coordinate your movements. Those systems even had little cards you carried around that kept your pilot record and stuff. Now, all that we've actually had confirmed from Namco Bandai about the similarity from the POD to this system is that the same display or very similar display technology was used. But the actual software was written in Unreal 3 for this, which is not what those were written in, uh, not what the Gundam games were written in. And we have no confirmation whatsoever on whether there's a multiplayer element to this, whether there's any networking between the cabinets. We don't know about headphones or any of that, but we do know it uses the same display tech, same kind of cabinet design. We also see here in a lot of these shots these two handed control scheme, which is uh, similar to what you saw in those. One hand controlling, let's take a look here. It's yeah, we, we appear to have a, a throttle for the oh. left hand, yep, back nice back little up. horizontal yeah. control, and a, a vertical yoke for the right hand to control most of the steering. It looks like there's a trigger button for your lasers, might be a 
It looks like there might be a thumb button there for your missiles. Yeah, I'm guessing that's for missiles and proton torpedoes, depending on what you're flying, probably concussion missiles or proton torpedoes. And we don't know what else is available there yet. We've taken a look here. Uh, we see that there's acceleration and braking, but beyond that, not a lot to tell. We also don't see any evidence of the foot pedals that you find in some of the Gundam models. I, I doubt they'd bother to include those for this. But looking at the gameplay itself, beyond the pod, uh, Frank, what, what excites you about what you see? I'm just thrilled. First off, the uh, the possibility of networking is amazing and sounds like a ton of fun. Um, but it's been a long time since we've had uh, a Star Wars arcade machine. I yeah. think uh, the last one was what the Pod Racer one in like 2099, and uh, yeah. there's that arcade trilogy that came out when the special editions came out. Right. I remember the arcade trilogy game. Played that a lot. Played the Pod Racer game some too, and those were very colorful, large screen games. But this is just if you've never been in one of these, the, the immersive audio and visual effect will will dwarf what you experience with those. I think uh, having having fooled with the Gundam once, and uh, Star Wars arcade games actually have a long, kind of glorious history. I mean, those two games were very impressive. Um, yeah, they were visually they were very large cabinets. It's, you know, and they, they brought Star Wars arcades to, like, you know, the, the modern era back in, you know, 1999, 2000. But looking at these shots of the trench run, I, I, I just keep going back to the original Star Wars arcade game by Atari, that beautiful color vector graphics game. Guys, if you've never seen it, you really need to Google uh, Atari Star Wars and, and take a look at it. It had these wonderful, razor-sharp, crisp graphics, and uh, it, it had a couple of kinds of cabinet for it. Uh, you yeah, there was, there was a vertical cabinet, you know, kind yeah. of like your standard arcade machine, and there was a cool sit-down cabinet that had awesome side art and you know, sit down in your cockpit and have your yoke in your hands and you know fly that x-wing that wonderful environmental effect and it also was based on attacking the death star you flew in you ran down the trench you evaded uh, enemy tie fighters shot at darth vader blew up the death star backed away you had obi-wan kenobi's voice the fools will be with you always which if you're careful you hear similar sound bites in mm -hmm. this here it's obviously meant to be evocative that that cabinet uh, also had a conversion kit for empire strikes back which had its which own had version of the uh Battle of Hoth that yeah, we're going to so jump into here in a second. Right there, the Battle of Hoth. But yeah, so you could take out AT-ATs uh, or ADATs. That's right. AT-AT uh, AT for all-terrain armored transport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back here. Yep. We have all these these giant walkers. But in addition to that, look here, we've got TIE Fighters down here at ground level. Look at that. Now, at first, I thought that we would be flying X-Wings here since those are TIEs, but I only see two laser patterns. So there are two or four here. Is that a two or four laser pattern coming out of our ship here? Can you tell? It's it's definitely hard to make it out. Yeah, let's take a um, let's take a look. But so there's it's the X-wing. You know, pattern, the X-wing right has that clear like one, two, three, four. Which leads me to believe that we're actually this, flying yeah, snowspeeders here. This is a snowspeeder. Yeah, it's a two snow at a time. Yep. So we're flying a snowspeeder in this sense, and those are the Rebel Medium transports that we saw escaping from Hoth in Empire Strikes Back, but never actually see over the battlefield. Uh, we yeah. see them in space. We see them on the ground, but I don't think we ever see them flying in atmosphere, do we? Not in any of the movies. Uh, in some of the Rogue Squadron games, you happen to fly them out into space and, and do a, a similar thing to this, where you're defeating some TIEs, some TIE bombers, and trying to let the transports escape. All right, and speaking of Rogue Squadron, any evocative moments here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, all the Rogue Squadron games always have these awesome Endor speeder bike levels where, you know, if you blink once, you end up running into a tree. And this time, it looks like you can also run to stormtroopers. Yeah, run into stormtroopers, or they dive out of the way, and a guy can jump on board. But yeah, there's one guy who actually, if we look carefully here... Kind of just leaps. Yep. Yeah. That is one agile stormtrooper that just jumped out of our way there again. I was like, folks, smartest stormtrooper in the Empire right there. Look at that guy. He's like, yep, I'm out of the way. That guy can move. All right. And then uh, another great sequence uh, that we've seen in a lot of games the uh, Battle of Endor, the Space Battle of Endor, which is, you know, the Death Star, the second Death Star, and the Imperial Starfleet against the Rebel Alliance. Out here, once again, medium transports. We also see a Corellian Corvette up there in the top right. We can make out some MC-80 cruisers. Is that a Corvette or is that a gunship? That's a Corvette. Uh, MC-80 uh, uh, cruisers. We're flying right past uh, an Imperial-class Star Destroyer. I'm not sure if that's an Imp Star 1 or 2. There's a TIE uh, LN fighter flying by there. And, and now then, we're inside the superstructure. Yeah, right inside. Now, we've gotten a chance to peek. We know already what some of the missions are. One of them is this one flying into the superstructure in the Falcon. You'll be piloting the Falcon yep. here. What else have we seen? Uh, of course, we've seen speeder box on Hoth, or yep. it, oh. Endor. Whoa, speeder box on Endor. That'd be amazing. Speeder, yeah, speeder, speeder box on Endor. Speeder yeah. box on Endor. We are thinking um, snow speeders on Hoth. Right. Um, and then, of course, you have X-Wings doing the trench run in the first Death Star. Right. But then, when we get to the very, very end of this trailer here, we can just skip very, ahead a little. Very special. Death Star's destroyed. So, yeah, we, we, we have speeder bikes. We have snow speeders. We have the Millennium Falcon. We have the X-Wing. And now we have something a little bit different. What? 
We have a tie advance. This. That's right. We have a tie advance. Now, how do we know it's a tie advance? Well, if we watch here in a second, we're flying up on that Nebulon B frigate, which is pulling something, it looks like, with tractor beams out of an atmosphere. Something we flying fly and awesome. Ah, okay, several things just happened. First, there's a Millennium Falcon. Uh, and we're shooting at it. Second, we see that the pattern of laser fire coming out, if we look very carefully, that's two streams, not four, which means we're not flying a TIE interceptor. So we know it's either got to be a TIE LN or a TIE, TIE advance to have those two guns. But on top of that, we were able to cheat and look at another screenshot that Amco sent us, and we know that this is, in fact, Darth Vader's TIE advance. And what's this mission called? This is uh, Vader's Revenge, if I'm not mistaken. Can you explain Vader this Vader gets his revenge on Luke and Han for blowing up the Death Star. So my understanding is this is... Uh, the planet Yavin, not the not the moon base, but yep. w the thing that they were actually rotating around. That's right. You the, know, the, the thing Death they Star didn't just orbit. blow up to shoot through, that they had to wait a half an hour instead of just shooting through it to shoot the moon. Exactly. Yeah. So Little the Death Star has Star blown up, and now it's starting to fall to the planet, and it would appear that the Republic is trying to, or the Rebels are trying to get some piece of the Death Star. Maybe that's the Death Star cannon. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's glowing and it looks important. And Vader is going after the Millennium Falcon and trying to blow everybody up and stop them from getting their cool thing. So is it like Vader, like he gets shot up into space, and he's like, instead of the movies, where it's like, <laughs> and like kind of sort of flies away. In this alternate like, reality, he remembers that there's like, a break, and like, he stops yeah, he stops, and then like, goes to You piece. shot me, jerk! And like comes back after Absolutely, it. comes okay. back right into yeah, the I think, I think that's what we're looking at here. So, folks, yeah, that is the new Star Wars Battle Pod arcade game and what we know about it. Um, Frank, your impressions? I want to play this so bad right now. I really if, do. If too. I if I could get tickets and just fly to New York and go to the Dave and Buster's in Times Square, I would do it right now. This looks amazing. Yep. I'm super excited. And when was the last time you were excited for an arcade game? Uh, well, I, I every weekend since I, I live near Alameda and get a chance to go down to the uh, High Scores Arcade there and play all the old ones. But when it comes to a new game, it has been a long, long time, and I love what I see here. I, the possibility of, of multiplayer networking on a pod, I mean, I, I have no idea if they have plans for that here. Most of what we've seen here, frankly, looks single player, and that worries me into thinking that won't be part of it. But I still want to play these great moments in Star Wars history, and I want to do it with booming speakers and blinking lights and a crowd of people cheering me on, and only an arcade can provide that. Absolutely. Networking would be great, but this, even if it's single player, is just going to be amazing. All right. Well, Frank, thank you so much. Folks, are you excited for Star Wars Battle Pod? Do you like what you see here? Uh, what's your favorite Star Wars arcade game? We talked about some of the good ones. There have been some stinkers, too. Any ones you want to make sure this doesn't turn out like, a.k.a. Atari's Return of the Jedi? Yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments. And uh, for everything Star Wars, stay here with your friends at IGN. Thanks, and bye-bye.